Welcome to Arrow Academy and this short Frequently Asked Questions video on IFRS 9. In this video, we will look closer at nine key questions, such as, how do you classify debt instruments? How are equity instruments classification options different from that of debt instruments under IFRS 9? You can find short links to the separate questions in the video description below. Stay tuned as we provide answers to these key questions and many more. Our first question is, how are debt instruments classified under IFRS 9? Under IFRS 9, debt instruments are classified into three categories based on the business model for managing them and their contractual cash flow characteristics. These categories are amortized cost, fair value through other comprehensive income, and fair value through profit or loss. This streamlined classification helps in reducing complexity and enhancing clarity in financial reporting. On cash flow characteristics, the cash flow characteristics should depict the basic lending arrangement. This means that all cash flows from the financial instrument should represent the principal amount owed and the interest charged as consideration for the time value of money and the credit risk associated with the principal amount. In addition to these, the cash flows should also consider basic lending risks such as liquidity, costs like administrative expenses, and profit margin. On Business Model, the Business Model reviews how financial assets are managed to generate cash returns. It is based on the reason for holding the asset. This assessment considers whether financial assets are held to collect contractual cash flows, to sell, or a combination of both. Next, let's discuss how equity instruments classification options differ from that of debt instruments under IFRS 9. Equity instruments are classified as fair value through profit or loss, or FVTEL, if they are held for trading. Equity instruments can also be irrevocably designated at fair value through other comprehensive income, or FVOCI, if they are not held for trading. Unlike debt instruments, equity instruments under FVOCI do not recycle gains or losses from OCI to profit and loss upon disposal. Moving on, what is the criteria for reclassifying a financial asset under IFRS 9? Reclassification is required only when there is a change in the business model for managing those assets. This change must be applied prospectively from the reclassification date, ensuring that financial statements reflect current management strategies accurately. When reclassifying a financial asset from fair value to amortized cost, the asset's fair value at the reclassification date becomes its new carrying amount. Previous fair value adjustments recognized in profit and loss remain unchanged. This reclassification might occur when the business model for managing the asset changes, such as shifting from trading to holding it for the collection of contractual cash flows. It's important because it impacts how the asset's value fluctuations are reported in financial statements, providing a more stable view of its long-term value. What are the key parameters when computing expected credit losses, or ECL? The key parameters are probability of default, loss given default, and exposure at default. These parameters help in estimating potential losses by considering the likelihood of default, the loss severity in case of default, and the exposure amount at the time of default. While we've provided a brief overview here, detailed aspects such as the specific calculation methods for PD, LGD, and EAD, as well as advanced modeling techniques, are not covered. If you want to dive deeper into these topics, you can join our comprehensive training on IFRS 9 Financial Instruments at RO Academy. We offer in-depth training on this and other IFRS subjects to help you master financial reporting standards. What could make the exposure at default or EAD different from the outstanding balance of financial assets at the reporting date? Factors such as undrawn loan commitments, accrued interest, off-balance sheet exposures, and prepayments can adjust the actual amount at risk, ensuring an accurate reflection of potential exposure. What is the rebuttable definition of default period as per IFRS 9, and what are the scenarios where a reporting entity can deviate from this period? The rebuttable presumption of default under IFRS 9 is 90 days past due. Entities can deviate from this period if reasonable and supportable information indicates another time frame more accurately reflects the default risk, such as specific internal assessments or historical data. 
What do you consider when computing loss given default, or LGD, when you have collateral and when you do not have collateral? With collateral, consider the type, value, and recoverability of the collateral, recovery costs, and time required for recovery. Without collateral, assess the unsecured recovery rate, historical recovery data, and borrower-specific factors. Collateral generally reduces potential losses by providing additional security. What factors should you consider when computing the probability of default, or PD? Consider historical default rates, borrower credit worthiness, current and forward-looking macroeconomic conditions, and specific borrower circumstances. Evaluating these factors ensures a thorough and accurate assessment of the likelihood of default. For deeper insights and continued learning, RO Academy offers a range of resources. Visit our website for expert-led webinars and interactive workshops tailored to help you navigate these changes effectively. Thank you for joining RO Academy. We value your support and would like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more insightful content and updates. Thank you.